Well, it's going to be Yannick to break us off in the opening frame. Very meticulous break off Yannick possesses. Very exact with how he places the cue ball. He has the spot squarely pointing to the ceiling. Yeah, you know, he, he's worked very hard in us, Brock. a race of seven it's a 50 minute match as Yannick breaks off and dispatches a ball immediately just the start he wanted like you said before it could be quite tight and maybe a bit cagey and obviously we know that if the games are tied at the end it goes to a six red shootout Brian Halcrow oh. actually holds the record <laughs> for the fastest six red shootout 1509, I believe. Yeah, it just, it just goes to show you, you know, it's well, and, and a lot of people's eyes would be seen as one of the, the slowest players, but yet he's got the best time, so it goes to show you that the six red shootout is not just all about speed around the table, you know, you, you need to break the balls well and you need to take them in the right order, which Brian obviously done. Well, I think that time stood for quite a while, isn't it? I think it, it still stands, does, doesn't it? It does, because Brian just told me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, th I think it'll be very, very hard to beat. It's, I think, did he pot one or two balls, maybe? He, he pot two reds ah, from, well. from the break, and then he... Well, he obviously didn't miss, but yeah. he, they, were, they were in a position where it was, it was stun, 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 stun. Yeah. Oh, what's Yannick done here? Oh. He's, He's definitely snooking himself. He just wanted to screw back a couple of inches there, and the, I mean... You wouldn't want for it's a better finish than that, Ronan, would you? Just literally stunned it dead. Um, I don't know what he's done. Unless he's, he was maybe a bit scared of the, the, the cloth being too quick and he didn't want to dig too deep into it. But to leave it there is a, a massive error for somebody as good as Yannick. I think it there would be, well, it's criminal. Um, I don't think he got a kick, did he? It, looked, it just looked impossible to, to do what he'd done. Uh, it, maybe he did get a bad contact because surely it, it, the cue ball had to come back somewhere. I mean, he was stretching a, he was stretching a tad. Yeah, yeah, and, then, and that doesn't help, but still you would expect a bit of a, a bit of spin on it. But well, it gives us an opportunity to look at Brian. It's not been presented with an easy chance. Let's have a look to see if he can cut that yellow across it at the bottom right-hand corner. He just called his extension. Yeah, it's not, not the easiest pot to get him started, but if he gets this, he, he's, a, he's a good chance. And he has done that's, Cracking a, ball. that's a great shot, and he's landed plumb on his other bad ball, so i would be delighted with that. Well, when I used to play against him, he didn't have a glove. That, that must be quite new. Um, no, I, I think it's a... There's a few players now, even uh, my, my mate Daggy wears a glove now, even... I, I, I know some of them started wearing them in sticky conditions out in China and whatever, but it seems to be they wear them at every competition now, so they must have just got used to them and, and are happy with it, but I don't think it would be for me, to be honest, but everybody did their own. Well, a nice little shot there from Brian down the rail. Just wants to drag the cue ball back a few inches, and this should be first blood to the man from Newcastle. Is he on it? I think he's just made it. Yeah, he's fine there. He would, he would actually like to be on the one to the middle just to drop it in. But he's probably going to leave the one up the rail to last now. Or is he playing up to the middle now? I think he might just pop this one in the middle and pop the other in the corner. Right. Screw back into the side rail and out. Just leave a tiny angle on the other yellow into the middle and just roll down for the black. Yeah, it might, must be sitting well out of the cushion now. It? it must be floating it into the middle handy enough. Yeah, it was. In fact, he doesn't even have to screw back now, does he? Yeah, just roll this in. Yeah, fair enough. Brian's one of those players, he never really plays the wrong shot, you know, he's been around the table a long time and he'll never give you anything easy, you, you sort of have to, you have to, you know, dig deep to beat him. Well, I think it's a misconception about Brian, you know, they think, oh, well, he's just going to plod and try and do this. Brian can pot. Yeah, no, he can, he can Brian pot. can play the game, and, and, no question. And he makes the game easy for himself. It's just, it, he's not having to pot hard balls all the time because he knows he knows how to play the game so well. Is that because he's not dancing around the table doing cartwheels? Yeah. You know, just because he's not getting them insensibly. Well, well, I think people's got this perception that you have to pot them quick and, and you have to be potting hard balls all the time to be a good pool player, but... 
Brian's one of those that, that he doesn't really have to put too many hard balls, and it'll not be a good mindset going into the second event either. Brian put all his uh, six stone into that one. <laughs> I'm sure it's six and a half. But it's come up dry. And these reds look forgettable. If he doesn't get these, I think he could throw the towel on. Yeah, we're talking in the sort of stages if if he were to throw this one away as well, I think if it was me, the police would be talking me off the top of the hotel. Uh, it's, uh, hello. Just the way his mind is at the moment, you never know. But it's hard to try and put all that out, out of your head. I mean, when it's happened, one, maybe. Three lots. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's and a time foul. I mean, it's another cardinal yeah. sin, if you like. Yeah, he's just done a run. Oh, what's he done here? I think he's just I think he's just come far enough, hasn't he? Uh, it, but you see, he didn't actually get through it. He sort of poked at it a bit. You can just see he's, he's very tentative. Different. I think. Well, he's having, a, he's having to sway around a little he bit. Is, yeah. Only just a little bit, of tiny, tiny bit of spin here, just to come around the eight ball a little bit. Use a side. But but now, now is the the problem is he on this? Uh, you know. Could he play the centre red? Um, just left hand side and kick into the yellow that's yeah you can but if he doesn't get it right you know you can have the th this can go wrong now whereas if he had a bit more angle on that red you know he wanted to be over near the cushion playing into that or it was a very easy shot but this can go wrong well he's playing it off the yellow is he I think that's his intention yeah the only thing about that is where does the yellow go? It, well, if it, it kicks if off that other yellow and it can come down then and, and do a bit of damage on him. So you can't play this too hard. Oh, he's played it too easy because he didn't want to play it too hard. He's completely butchered it. And that is a complete... He's basically decelerated that much completely. with the cue that he's just not even played a shot, really, is he? Yeah, he's... He's, he's, he's really feeling it. Yeah, he's, his head's in the bin at the moment. Now he needs a, a monster shot to get back into the match. If he doesn't get this, a fear for him. No, no there, chance. No. It, it actually hit the top cushion. Well, once again... We see both feet make a huge error. See, you've seen his arm going there. His arm actually, you know, completely pulled, near pulled the arm out of himself like that. He's really, really struggling, as bad as I've ever seen him out there. Brian's not really taking much chance. I think he just wants this red out of the way of that yellow and black. That's what he wants because, it, you know, he just wants a clear pathway through there. And I can see what he's doing, obviously. Yannick not only has to hit this, he has uh, to pot it, Ronan. Yeah. I, well, that's a percentage shot, but just... Uh, these tend to go on every now and again. Oh, oh it wasn't far away. That was a good effort. And that one would have bit... Brian on the backside yeah, if they cut yeah. that to that corner. He's just having a look to see if black and yellow both go past red into that corner. Not sure they do. Mustn't. No, we're getting rid of the yellow for a start, which I don't blame him. So it'll leave the yellow that's nearest to black now till last to roll that in and play the black in the centre, surely. Yeah, or just nudge the black now up, up a bit. But yeah. Well, he's gone for the latter. Which was your choice? And this is pretty straightforward once again for Brian Halcrow. Yannick's just making it so easy for him. It just Brian hasn't really had to, you know, he hasn't really had to do anything apart from the first frame that he won. He, he had one hard ball to pot. Apart from that, it's just been 
up on the table every well, time it's a dream. it comes. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you want, especially in your first match. And on the main table. Yeah. So you get, you've you've got your footing for for later rounds possibly. Yeah, you've you've got been to. out there, you've played and everything's hunky dory. So yeah. you you know, if you do get through and you've got good memories of being out there, it tends to yeah, it gets the confidence to manifest itself in, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Brian couldn't be happier at the minute, and Yannick couldn't be in a, in a worse place. Not too sure about this, because he, he has to force this one in a wee yeah, bit he now. He, doesn't, he wants to get straight on, on the other, all to the other corner. So he needs to punch this a bit, and then it becomes missable. Did punch it and it's not as he out far enough. Well, you, when you play this, if you want to place your left hand side and check this yellow into that corner, it will slide again. The cube yeah. when it will come, yeah, come wide. Maybe so it's, it's maybe going to have to play the eight ball to the corner now, but he has to track it. See the slide? Yeah. He doesn't come directly back, so now he's got an angle on this yellow that he didn't want. Yeah, and it's just, it's just the worst angle he could have because he, he has to force the yellow in now. And, and do you go off the three cushions and back round for the black, or do you screw into the top rail? I would, I would prefer in these tables to screw into the top rail, because once you start going around three cushions, you're, you're having three slides. And yeah. Yeah, he's played for the middle. That's good. He's played a good shot. That's a, that's a fair bit of side there from Brian Halcrow on the cue ball. So he defied us both. Yeah. He did a bit of both. Screwed round the angles. No matter, because in it goes, and uh, Brian Halcrow now with an incredible 4-0 lead against Yannick Bofis. He's moved to the... Well, he's moved to a cut break. Surprised at that, because I thought, thought it was... Well, he was hitting them well enough, but maybe he thought he wasn't getting enough reward from it, but... Mm. This will not do him any favours this way out. Well, well, we do see players change their break from time to time mid-match. Are you one of those players, Ron, or do you just stick with um, your same break all the time? The, the sometimes I do, fairness. Uh, you know, if it's gone really bad, I would, I would use the cut break, but... Yes, I think some tables just play totally different, you know? Awkward cue in here for Yannick. Just about okay, I think. He'll want to be on the one at the bottom of the table. He'll, he'll want to be able to screw up the inside of, the, of them reds too, because... Well, everything goes, that yellow that's near the middle pocket, that still will go in a little bit. It looks a bit tight. Yeah, I think it'll just drop in if he's behind yeah. it. He's com coming across the table here, is he? Oh, he's pictured it again. I'll tell you what, he lifted off his cue. Yeah, there, he, jumped, he jumped up on it. Yeah. He had to hit that very thin, and I, I don't think he, he could have hit it as thin as he wanted because the red was nowhere. Yeah, it was very snatchy indeed. And this is a horrible cue in shot. Yeah. Close to the rail, length of the table cut. You don't fancy this going in. That's a great shot. Of course. Yeah, that's a great shot. And he was up on Every, foot Everything again, I know too. about Paul, which is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He surprised me there too, because just the way the matches went, you, you wouldn't have fancied him. You'd have been out that. there with the bookie betting on that being uh, missed, I would have done. Yeah. You know, in his state of, in his frame of mind at the moment, but... There's still a wee bit of work to do here, because he has to put this and leave the angle on, on the second last yellow. Is he on it? He's played that really well. Obviously, angle to float down for the middle, but he can certainly stun it in and take the his last ball. Well, he seems to be playing better on the harder shots than he does on the on the things that you think are just formality. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if he gets his, he's, he's right back in this match. Yes, yeah, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's good on him. Fair play to him because, I mean, from down and out, he, he's took out two, two good finishes here. Gets him back into it and gets Brian thinking. Does Brian switch back to his break next time he comes up? Well, I, th I think he maybe has to because at least he was, he was hitting them good. Though. This for 4 2. 
In it goes. And Yannick Berfis suddenly has arrived at this match. I don't think he can get to five. I think four's a push. And that's no. not going to help his cause. Yeah, he's just had a complete nightmare. Having a look at the break. Kubel just stayed out, but the yellow came along and said, oh, no, you don't. Yeah, sort of, I think he knew once he seen it go under the hole, I think he had accepted his fate. These yellows are pretty good here. If we can just get to the middle of the table and, and put the yellow one off the red, free, the, free is bad yellow. Absolutely, I was looking just at that as you said it. Drop that one and quite to where it needs to be. Yeah, just a bit of walker cube, but nothing too dramatic. Should be able to negotiate this. He can even take the one to the middle now if he wants and hold on, on the red, and, and then he's, he's actually perfect. Brian can see the finish line. He hasn't had that great. He wants to be out somewhere in line with that red in the middle of the table. Just stun up onto it now. Let's put that shot now. I've oh, just heard that Ian Alley has defeated Emma Cunningham. The table next door. So he will go through. Just has to be a wee bit careful here that this red doesn't uh, get in his way. Cause he wants to screw this back a bit. Guarantee himself a shot at the one over the hole. Yeah. yeah he's, he's played out pretty well. He's perfect. And now just this black, well, yellow and black, should I say. And this for the match. And a pretty convincing win for Brian Halcrow. And then it goes. There's Brian Halcrow, the man from Newcastle, beating the man from France, Yannick Bofis, by seven frames to two. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the action. Mark Shepherd and Aaron Davis with you as we get our second match of the afternoon underway. Eddie Barker takes on Callum Singleton. Two players very close together in the rankings, 43 and 45. Although it's worth saying that Callum's done that a year quicker than Eddie. Those are points from this season, so he's gone off to a good start. One runners-up spot already earlier on in the season. The number one ranked player on the Challenger event last time around which is why he got promoted but up against a very experienced opponent in the shape of Eddie Barker. Good afternoon Aaron. Yeah you're right Mark. Bit of a congested layout for this first frame all the balls seem to have clustered together at the top of the table. So, Eddie unsurprisingly bailing out from that visit. No obvious clearance to go after. Callum Singleton did so well last season. He was coming into the, the Challenger event as a well-fancied player to get promoted, but you've still got to go out there and do the business on the table, and he's kind of continued that in his first season as a pro. Looks very comfortable out there. Yeah, last year when Callum was playing in the Challenger Series, um, I think you know most of the players knew that he was probably a professional standard, and obviously he's shown that this year through a, a couple of the tournaments. Yeah, very good run at Event Five, losing out ultimately. At event Two, I should say, losing out ultimately to Chris Melling, eight-three in the final. 
had a fairly lean season apart from that. Three preliminary round losses, three last 64 losses, one last 16. It kind of shows how tough the standard is if you can be in the final one week and then struggling to get out of the first round the next week. Yeah, from, I know Callum quite well. Um, I grew up playing with him on the England team and the juniors and stuff like that. And I think probably the, maybe the one weakness that he has is maybe he struggles to play well from the start of the tournament. I know when he settles in, he's um, he's as good as anybody. But I have noticed a couple of times, you know, he, you know, he can get some bad results early on in tournaments, and probably just because he's just not settled in yet. And same for everybody, but certainly something I've noticed yeah such a key part of the game isn't it settling into tournaments particularly in this format where you're not guaranteed easy early matches like you maybe would in days gone by on bigger tours where there were some non-pros in the earlier rounds and it's important both to get off to a good start in any individual game and also to get off to a good start in the tournament we were just talking off air at the beginning about how long a wait it is if you do you lose your first round match? You're not going to be playing again until Saturday, so effectively got a day and a half off. Matches played to the same format as we've seen for the rest of the Pro Series this year, so 50 minute match clock. Races to seven. Would be a six round shootout if the scores were tied when the match clock got down to zero it's quite a long clock though for pro standard matches so I don't think we'll see the match clock be a factor in too many games this weekend it's usually tactical frame this there aren't that many situations in this rule set where you get this kind of pool played but both players struggling for any attacking options so just trying to play containing safeties and promote their balls yeah the situation at the moment is Callum does have control of the table at the moment but probably doesn't want to go for a finish until he feels it's you know his very favourite to, to get the finish with him being in control so it's the reason why we're seeing him still hold back and just trying to position his balls into better positions where he's a, he's a very good chance of making the finish then yeah, I mean, that's a good point, isn't it? Because y if you are in a dominant position in a frame and then you go for a clearance, that's, th that's the easiest way to turn the frame round and not be in a dominant position anymore if you don't get it. So I think the referee is just being asked here whether this is a stalemate, which would be the case if there's no path out. It doesn't matter if the shot would be a difficult one to play. It's a question of whether there is theoretically a path that the white can take out either through the yellows, which is what he's looking at now, or coming off the cushion the other side so the referee indicating that he thinks there is a path out so it wouldn't be a re -rack. yeah I mean to be honest I know he's looking at the gap between the yellows but I feel like there would have been a gap between the cushion and, and the yellow as well um, I'm, I'm always not 100% of the, of the rules in these situations but yeah I mean the rule you understand why it's like that, but it does feel a slightly odd one, which is that it's all about whether theoretically there's a gap that the white could go through. If the only gap was the one between the cushion and the ball, it, it would be almost impossible to actually play the shot. As it was, the referee's decision was that there was a gap between the yellows, so armed with that information, Eddie felt obliged to try and play it that way, but it, it always looked like it was a gap that was barely any bigger than the cue ball. It would actually have been a very harsh result if Callum had played what was an excellent safety shot to get into that position. If he'd have left a re-rack, it would have been quite harsh. So, ball in hand, but... Giving some thought to how he opens things up. Played that pretty well. So another of the pros, Dylan Leary looking on. Good friend of Eddie Barker's. There again is an example. It was a potential finish, but decided that it wasn't worth losing the initiative from what is otherwise such a good position for Yellows. 
Yeah, now, although he does look like he's in total control this frame, certainly with these rules, he does have to be careful not to leave Eddie at some point a loss of turn shot, which could basically turn the frame round in just one shot. That's a very good shot from Eddie because, to be honest, I would put Eddie favourite now because he's, he's blocked the yellows up, stopping Callum from clearing up. But at some point, he's also going to get to play the loss of turn shot. Good self-restraint from Eddie, because there would have been an argument there for just smashing into those reds a bit harder and just trying to make something happen. But played the positive shot, or rather played the, the well-thought-through shot that had a positive tactical outcome. I think there was a moment Callum thought he hadn't hit that hard enough, but this table has been re-clothed before the match, so likely to be playing pretty quickly. A decent shot. I think he was actually trying to add the ice into the cake by also potting the yellow that the cue ball's finished nearer to. That would have been an excellent outcome from his point of view if that had dropped as well. I'll tell you what, that's a fantastic shot from Callum because I thought he was in a world of trouble there and somehow he's found a way to open that bad yellow up and still leave all Eddie's reds um, on this uh, top cushion. You'd have to say, even though I'd be tempted to look at this frame and say eight and a half minutes played and nobody's gone for a clearance yet as being a negative frame, but there's actually been a, a very good standard of tactical play. Both players have played some good and at times quite difficult shots. Referee just confirming that the White is touching the yellow. So not obligated to hit another ball. He's obligated to hit a cushion. That part of the shot still needs to be made. But can choose to, even though it's a touching ball, he's playing a different yellow. Bit of a shot to nothing that, because if that drops in, he's got the ball over the top right-hand corner. But in fact, it hasn't. Isn't immediately disastrous, although again, a chance ready to turn things around. So it seems like the tactical situation has largely been resolved now. Surely hasn't landed there with the cue ball. Oh my god. It's amazing, isn't it? You see that so often when you've had a long tactical frame, somehow when you're finally left an easy position to clear up from it, sort of out of sync with your normal game. So now I mean to play for the more difficult ball over the pocket. Oh, he's played that well though. What a good recovery shot that was from Callum Singleton. Put himself in a load of trouble. Back in prime position though. Well, in the end, he's reaping the rewards of some very good tactical play earlier on in this frame. Good standard actually from both players, but it's Callum Singleton that gets the first frame on the board. So, looking for a slightly different kind of layout this time, hoping to have a more open split of the ball so he can go for a clearance. Cuba was zigzagging across the table but does stay on the playing surface. Style of break, you do often see the balls get a bit more clustered up and that's kind of what's happened here. Looks like he's going to be playing the red off the yellow into the centre pocket and what, that, what that's done is opened the other red up into the left centre as well now. Fortunately I think he's landed a little bit awkward with the cue ball and 
not 100% sure if he can pot a ball from here, maybe the one to the left centre. He's missed it completely, it was certainly tight as well and with the cue ball on the top cushion it certainly wasn't easy. Yeah, it's one of those ones instead of almost playing to miss. He's obviously not actually playing to miss, but just trying to catch it as thin as possible. I don't think Andy will be too disappointed with the first frame. He was never in perfect shape, but kind of battled well into it. Good chance now, though, to open his account. This is a, a fair draw for both players, saying at the beginning very close together in the rankings. Not really any such a thing as an easy first round match. Yeah, certainly in the, um, the pro series, the days have gone of having them easy draws early on, and you know being able to play your play your way into the tournaments. It does make it all the more important though, what you were saying about Callum on occasion maybe take you a bit longer to settle into a, into a tournament. Something you've got to adapt to with this format. It's of course much easier said than done, like everybody wants to get off to a good start, it's just how you achieve it. Yeah, and it's something that everyone's going to struggle with, but some people um, deal with it better than others. It's also something that comes with more experience of playing out in these conditions. Certainly not short of match practices, Callum, but hasn't played as much, of course, until this season out in this main arena. Slightly different format this weekend. We're taking a bit more time to complete event one, which is this Pro Series 9 final on Saturday night, so giving more people a chance out in the in arena tables. So we've got another five tables in play just behind those screens at the back, the other pro event tables. So two very contrasting frames, a slow tactical one first, goes the way of the man on the right hand side of the screen. I didn't actually know until this year. Obviously he come through the the amateur rankings last year and never heard of him and obviously now I know why everyone's been talking about him because what I've seen of him this year he looks very good and he's obviously a, a young player as well and he's got plenty of time to get himself to the top. Yeah that's been one nice thing about the pro series the, the range of different backgrounds of people getting to this stage we've got a lot of the young players coming through but the two gentlemen in shot there Eddie Barker and Dylan Leary been at the top of the game for a long time Bring a lot of experience to the table. It's funny actually, you mentioned Dylan's there watching and obviously we know in the Pairs Cup on Monday nights he plays with Eddie Barker. But also in the um, the World Doubles Championship, obviously with him being teammates with Callum for Northern Ireland, they played doubles in the, um, the World Championship, so who's he going to be supporting? <laughs> yeah, that's very true, yes. He, he's very supportive, he and Eddie often watches each other's matches, but yes, he's had that run with Callum as well. Tournament that you've got fond memories of, that World Doubles. It certainly is, yeah. Any excuse to bring it up. <laughs> got your guaranteed one plug per commentary session. <laughs> it's been fun to watch, though. There's been maybe a bit more doubles action in the last couple of years than there had been previously. I, think, I mean, obviously, you've enjoyed playing in it. I think a lot of the players have enjoyed it. That's unlucky. I think he's looking at that thinking there's, there's no gap. Obviously there is a theoretical gap through there, but he's thinking he's never going to find his way past the past the red. And worse still, not only is he f I mean, you, you look at that angle, it was only because he was playing with so much spin, it went forward before it started going down the table and then man managed to manufacture a gap that was never really there. Yeah, and although it, it wasn't lucky to going off either way, he still did miss the two reds and 
it certainly wouldn't have been easy to clear up by the way. Um, yeah, of course, he's trying to go directly into them reds. He's just found a gap behind him. Kind of played as a two-way shot there. I was hoping that he'd open the balls up, but knew that if they didn't quite come open, he'd probably have a chance to play a reasonably good safety shot back. One of those occasions where having a ball in hand is useful, but the fact it's only one visit sometimes isn't enough to get the frame one there and then, so he's done the right thing. Hard to judge these kind of one cushion escapes when you're as close to the cushion as this. Well. In hand. Better the tables have been recovered before this tournament, but if I understood correctly, the, the cushions haven't been changed from the last event, which has actually proved quite a popular decision. Probably means the cushions will play a bit more predictably and less slidey. Also, probably just tightens up the pockets of shade. Slightly between positional options, but still got a shot. Be happy enough with where these yellows are sitting. This is a kind of straightforward practice finish. Just wants to leave a slight angle the ball to the bottom right hand corner after this to come up the table. Yeah, to be honest, I think it doesn't really matter what ball he leaves till the last, but out of the three yellows, I probably wouldn't have left the one that he is going to leave till the last, which is the bottom right corner, because he could land a little bit of a funny angle on it, possibly. Yeah, I mean, there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way. It was uh, That was my thinking of ideally not leaving that one till last, but should still be fine. And I mean, that is probably just about the funny angle I was talking about as well, because he might just have enough to be able to screw it, but if not, it's not easy to go forward. And that's what I was saying, I mean, I didn't expect it to go wrong, but if any of those three yellows being the last ball could have gone wrong, it was that one. Didn't really have an actual angle to screw past that. He was, he was trying to play a controlled shot. Well, no harm done in the end. Finds the double. Bows out, though. He'll be back in action on Saturday. Well, I suppose it's always the danger of that break. You're sort of playing from the side. You're always queuing a bit across the front ball. You just got to be careful you don't go too far across it. Yeah, his first um, three breaks, he, he actually screwed the white back. And what he's not trying to do, which he's done here, is put topspin on the ball. And that's the reason he's ended up topping it into the middle pocket. I won't be too disappointed though because when the balls are messy like this, it's um, if you're going to go for a finish and you, and you go two or three balls into the finish and you don't get it, you do make your opponent a massive favourite and obviously this is a tough finish.
just played there. Didn't want that double kiss. Wanted to try and leave the cue ball up tight near the top cushion. for something here. He has just about got an angle, I think, on the ball to the left centre to disturb that cluster, but he's not going to have too much certainty over where everything's going. Or is he going to play the more conservative option? Yeah, he could certainly cannon into them off the, the red into the left centre, but maybe feels that the, the cue ball might have been just skidding off them rather than actually going into them and developing. It's one of those ones where you'd have been a bit lucky to get both of the reds out. You can realistically see one of them coming out, but perhaps not both. scores are tied at this point obviously means there's no sort of immediate pressure on either player it's not one of those situations where one person's a long way behind and feels compelled to go for a finish we know now for sure that we're going to be getting into those last 10 minutes of the match so the rest of the match is going to be played with a bit more pace it's looking relatively unlikely now that the match is going to get to a conclusion if it was to be 7-3 or 7-4, maybe you could see it getting done. But if it stays close, every chance of the match clock being a factor. Well, how's that a shot for Eddie Barker? Very creative. Spotted that there was a plant towards the opposite centre, off the cushion, plant the red into the red and the yellow together. And what a great finish he's fashioned here. Yeah, he actually only just spotted that shot on this visit because if he would have seen it on his last visit where Callum played the loss of turn shot, he could have he could have done the same thing on that visit. He could have potted the one into the left middle and left that plant. Um, so yeah, I think he only just seen that on this visit and played it very well as well. Controlled the cue ball as well. So as Eddie breaks off in this frame, there's not really any pressure on the outcome. He doesn't see in terms of pride of performance like to dash off a quick clearance to get it over the line 7-4, but 6-4 and 7-4, no real difference between them. Well, not a great rack in the end by the look of things, but actually the balls are split kind of okay, so chance for sort of buzzer beater clearance, but unfortunately for Callum it won't be one that gets him anywhere in the match. It'll just be a highlights real moment if he does manage to clear these up. was always very very even every time you thought a player was in front the other would play a great yeah. shot to keep it going and yeah very very enjoyable watch so it's quite good about these rules when you're playing tactically there's a few ways of switching a frame you know and you, you've got to think two or three shots ahead of what your opponent you think they're going to do and they could be obviously doing the same to you and you can just sort of you're outwitting each other on to who's who's going to give themselves the opportunity, but then who's going to try and go for the opportunity or just leave it another shot, you know, because sometimes leaving it that other shot means they go for it and you don't get the chance. So, so yeah, it's real cat and mouse when it's like that. Isn't well, this yellow is accessible just above the break line, which makes Cookie's choice, I can suggest, fairly straightforward. just wonder if the yellows are in each other's way a little bit at the yeah, top of the table. If that slides underneath there, he's, he's all right. It's not convinced us yet, I don't think. Yeah. 
He's um seems pretty confident around the table, doesn't he? Oh, he's just neat. He's used. Yeah, he's just used the pocket there, the weight of the pot as well, just to let the pocket slide it in. Yeah, squeezed it in. Table's yeah. looking absolutely pristine, which yeah. does mean I think the pockets will play a little bit generous at the start of the start of the competition here. Yeah, I think the carpet's got more nap on it than the uh, table <laughs> today, hasn't it? <laughs> I think the carpet needs a brush <laughs> and an iron. I'll let you volunteer. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let you know again on Sunday. <laughs> He's uh, come a little bit hampered there. I think he would have liked to have took that yellow up to the top left. But it's not too bad. He's, he might have to play a cannon here. Do you think there'll be an element of players getting caught out a little bit by the speed of the table in the in the sort of early going? Yeah. He's judged that one quite, yeah, nicely. Like quite nicely. I think sometimes people like to play that with a little bit of um, run inside or check side away from the ball they're hitting just so it splits them apart slightly. But he's just judged it nicely. Don't want to land on top of that, it's easily done. So he's going to use the reds as a bit of a buffer. To he needs to be careful though. Oh, he has, but he's just tipped the. Ball. Well, you got to remember the pot. Yeah. He just took his eye off the pot, hasn't he? Looking at the cannon. And how, how many times do we see that happen? It is yeah. the number one sin, really, when Very playing a shot like that, but it's amazing how often it still happens, yeah. even at the top level. He's played over a little bit left hand side. I think it's because they're so close together. The, it's just pushed the cue ball slightly into the yellow without the side kicking in, and it's just made him hit it a bit thick. Does Tom take the skill shot on first shot? Well, it'll be a good indicator as to how confident he feels. Great yeah. to see TC back with us. Yeah, he's not taking it on. He's going up the table first. Has he got past it just about? Very interesting to see how TC goes because he's he was in you know demon mode for what felt like a good six months yeah. sort of at the turn of at the turn of the last year you know start of this one end of last and he's sort of been overtaken in the form table at least by Stevie mm -hmm. Dempsey in the last sort of few months but Tom Cousins hasn't gone away he's still run no, deep in yeah. pretty much every tournament he's still been at the level required to win yeah. them is it between Tom and Steve, I take it, for number one spot? Yeah, there's yeah. A, if Chris, Chris Melling can mathematically do it, but he needs a big, big performance yeah. this weekend, and he, I think he'd need Tom and Stevie to, to pull up a little bit short, yeah. so Chris is a real outside shot, but pretty much between Tom and Stevie for number one, and mm. I mean, it, it says a lot for me for Chris Melling to even still be in consideration. When we talk yeah. about how good a time Stevie and Tom have had in the last year and a half, the fact that Chris is even mathematically capable shows how consistent he's been. Yeah, well, I was just thinking that when you when you mentioned Chris, I, I, I didn't think he was in the conversation, to be honest. I wasn't sure who he was going to say. But, um, yeah, just like you say, it just shows how he's sort of kept he's kept there, hasn't he? Such a relentless level. Yeah. It's, a, it's actually an underrated part of his game, I think, because he is so mercurial. People can see him as this bit of a maverick and almost think, oh, well. <laughs> but he's just been so consistently great. Ever since Ultimate Pool began, really. Yeah, definitely. He's, well, he's one of the big names of Ultimate Pool, isn't he? And, and of Q Sports in the world. So you would kind of um, you'd partly expect him to be at his game most of the time, you know? He's, um, I say, he's a proper, true professional Q Sports player, isn't he? Not, not a pool player. He's, you know, he does a lot. Yeah, absolutely. He's in action as well later on this evening. You'll see that match here on the main table as we see. Matt Cook going off. Yeah, you see the slide off that first cushion there. The top spin on the cue ball. So TC, you did wonder if he was going to go skill shot first. He yeah. actually was quite clever with how he worked it out, I think, there. Yeah, I think he, it's it's easy to say now that Matt didn't get out of it, you know, but the snooker he left Matt in, I'm, you know, it was a one cushion. Matt, well, no, he went two cushions, but the target still for the treble isn't... I didn't think it was too bad a target. Matt would have fancied hitting the yellow. And if he'd hit it, the white could have followed through his nuke and Tom on the black. So Tom did take a bit of a risk. You know, I don't know if he'd play that shot against Chris Mellon. But yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, quite. But I think for your first frame, he just wants to get himself in, into the game, doesn't he? Well, it's, it's percentages, isn't it? Yeah. And I like the way he's played that shot as well. Didn't try and be too clever and maybe trap the white off the and come up the table. He just played the natural. Yeah. Really simple. Just let the white do the work. A lovely visit to the table from Tom Cousins, who goes 1-0 in front. Let's have a look. Yes, you do. Yes. Chilts at 8 o'clock. Mm, cool. 
it's um, I don't what you're saying earlier. I, I completely agree. It does feel like even if you're not sort of, you know, in the contention to you know, be number one or you know, essentially have a place to play for, yeah. it does always feel like the last event of the year. You do want to put on a bit of a show and finish the year strong. It sort of sets you up quite well for the next year and all the rest of it. Yes, but. It, it's still the same ruthless environment. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I feel yeah. a little bit for Callum Singleton who's yeah. who, and Yannick Bofi we saw earlier who've oh, shown did up. Did Brian beat him, did he? Yeah. yeah. Bro- it, uh, Yannick struggled a little bit, actually. It was mm. Probably as, as bad as I've ever seen Yannick play. He didn't play oh. well. And uh, credit to Brian, he played very well. And took all buzzing was buzzing. He was, <laughs> mate. He was flying around. <laughs> and... Uh, but yeah, a player like Callum, for example, he's played Eddie Barker there. Both of them have played really well. Yeah. Made one or two mistakes piece, and Eddie gets the nod. All of a sudden, Callum's out in round one. He's like, oh, end of the season. Yeah. It's coming it's up. It's about till Saturday now. Yeah, I'm, and I'm running out yeah. of chances to, to make an impression. It's, it's, it's tough, tough, tough time to play. Yeah, it's such, and I think throughout the season, I think it's such a similar story for a lot of, because the, sta- the way the standard is and the races aren't the longest races um, it's just you can think to yourself well I was a bit unlucky to lose that game or I've made one mistake in that match and, and lost it and there can be a few like that and I think you know it's that's why you kind of this last last series is the one to sort of put anything to you can sort of put your season to bed sort of how it's been by ending on a high mm. you know and think all the things that have gone wrong possibly but in the same same way if it's gone right for your season it could just go tragedy wrong on the last one and well uh, I mean someone like Callum's a good example I mean he's yeah. been to a pro series final another semi-final yeah. I think this year as well and you know out in the first round of event nine is yeah. not where he wanted to be I mean they, they always say like as I saying you're as good as your last game but I think when he looks back over the season he's going to be happy isn't he you know pretty happy with how it's yeah, gone yeah you'd hope so and that's what that's ultimately what you should be looking at rather than you know your last game if I say depending on how he gets on in the, in the next uh, series but you know you sometimes you can it's just that in, that in that moment don't you you feel a bit down but or a bit higher but when you come back and look over the season you've got to sort of analyse it and think what you could do better for next season so Cook with the miss yeah, and he's forced it? Tom Cousins into an aggressive shot. He's got some work to do at the top of the tail. We've got even more work to do now, I'd say. Yeah, he might not go. I'm not sure. Really. Could he play off the red as and screw, try and screw down behind the red and put the yellow to the side cushion? Because I don't think he can go here. But he needs to hope develop some reds. Yeah, I didn't see the full journey of the cue ball off the back of that shot. I think he was trying to play into the top of the table. Is he going to screw behind the red? Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. He's not, he won't be too happy with that, though, I don't think. Smart, especially not if he's left a yeah, little plan in the middle. He really needs to see that cue ball behind the red to block the yellows down the table. And yeah, the, I think the yellow is just too high on the jaw to make that a yeah. simple plan to make. But he has got the shot at the bottom of the table, which is very gettable. Yeah, and if he, get, if he gets a cube underneath the yellow and black, he could even play the yellow into the right centre and screw across into the two yellows. But it's a bit of, bit of an ask, but I think if he doesn't do something now, he's not possibly not going to get another chance, or he could be in more trouble next time. He's going to flick off it and come down. He doesn't want to leave that red to top left for Tom. Oh, oh he's double kissed it. Has he had an edge? No. Not, can he get to the ball top left? Yeah, I think he can. Yeah, he just flicked off the top of the yellow twice there, yeah. didn't he? He possibly would have wanted to flick the other yellow as well, but... The two reds to the top right, they don't seem to plant. But, oh yeah, Tom's going to jack up here and try and make something happen in this top right corner. Yeah, just put it a little bit thin. Position. Well, now he's put himself in the position that Matt Cook wanted to put yeah. him in a shot ago. Isn't it funny how that often works out? Yeah. Well, tell you what, Tom won't be pleased with that. This gives Matt a chance now. Yeah, terrific chance. He's got one bit of work to do. The yellow just above the left of his pocket. He could, well, he could possibly risk trying to screw into it now, or he could come down the table then play the yellow top right off the bottom cushion and just try to flick it over the middle but the only danger may be that not leaving yourself on a shot whereas this this way I think he'll, he'll leave himself on a shot regardless yeah, well, screwed towards that yellow he's tried it as well 
we might be leaving it to last now to play down the line. Which isn't the worst idea in the world, yeah. just means you've got to make a tough ball. Yeah, and you probably don't want to land straight on that straight on it because the knuckle can just bump the cube out nicely for the black as well. So it, was, uh, maybe it was a bit of a free go. There was a the risk of got screwed into the middle pocket, but yeah. Uh, so just come inside it. So he's gonna just try and get on it and play up the line. He's just composing himself a bit for this shot. These early shots can set your mind for how you're feeling. Get you build your confidence up. That might be a bit straight. You just you can see as he hit that the, the cube with the top spin came back off the yellow before it before it, the top spin kicked in and went forward. You just hit it a bit harder. You need to, you just put it a bit thicker. That can get over. That's not bad. That's about perfect. Yeah, I was going to say just, nice. just had enough, didn't he? Yeah, he had to really force it in, but he couldn't really want to be in a better place than this. And Knuckles just going to give the cue ball a little bit of acceleration as well to bump out. Yeah, just all focus on the pot here. It's amazing when you just have to focus on the pot there and you don't have to worry about the cue ball. Yeah. It does become a whole lot easier. Nicely rolled in by Matt Cook. Yeah, a nerve settler. After a bit of a yeah. iffy start to this match. He's on the board and it's 1-1 one, one and Tom Cousins on the break then. And he has absolutely put everything through that. Oh, look, at the, look at the line of reds across the middle of the table. Look at that. Yeah, the black's not quite too far but they split Tom away nicely. Tom Cousins going airborne with the break there. Look at these reds. They actually might get in each other's way. They might even go yellows if the yellow goes to. Uh, no, he's got to go. Around, he? Yeah, it sort of shows how much they're in the way if he's going for this one first. Oh, he's played that well, avoided the yellow. Yeah, he's played it nicely to get back past the halfway point. Joker. Joker's in the house. Two reds to the left of the table that's next to each other. There. I don't know if he can play a plant with one of them, but no, he can't. It's well, they're just all a little bit in the way of each yeah, other. Yeah, that's what I said when he broke off. They all seem to get in each other. That's why you have to play that shot to the right centre first. I didn't know if he'd play the one next to the yellow first, but he might screw back into these. Really. Yeah, that's nice. That's come out all right. He took uh, maybe a little bit of a gamble there, but. I think he had to possibly play some sort of developing shot because it's hard to get back on them balls. Well, his, his red just next to the yellow on the right is a little bit of a pain for him because I don't know if it goes bottom right. If it doesn't, it goes left centre, but it's a little bit awkward to yeah, land there. Yeah, he was on it perfect on when he after he broke off, so maybe it doesn't go. Well, there you go. It didn't because that's why he's broken it out. Yeah. Unless it's one of them where it's so tight you don't want to take the, op the chance. Because yeah, and he's got plenty around yeah, it to make it a bit easier he's for got, himself. He's yeah. got options, so you don't, you know, sometimes it's best not to take the chance. Because uh, if you don't get the clearance because you've gone for a shot that's tight, you'd be really kicking yourself when you know you don't have to play it. But now uh, this one to top left, and I think they'll all become kissing to the black or something. Yeah. All right, yeah, he's gone down there, back up. It's nice, played it well. Yeah, it's in a strange way, I think, despite the fact that he's 2-1 up, you just feel like TC need, just needs a frame on the board here. Just like a routine frame win, uh, just to feel comfortable and feel like he's got his he's got his mojo going. Yeah. It, it's not been convincing so far from no, Tom not Cat. Sure, no, no, no. So that last frame, that will hurt, hurt Matt because, you know, Tom was very fortunate to get away with that. Yeah, on a couple of occasions. Yeah. Smirker come out. So he's going to play this. He's going to screw back up, or is he going to try to just come before the middle pocket? Yeah, he's got. Oh, 
know, he wouldn't. He wanted to come out more than that. Or be a bit close to the yellow. Yeah, he could obviously play it to the left centre, but I think his cue was a little bit awkward. Yeah, he's going to struggle to hold it. He doesn't want to flick the black either. He's not, he's, he, I wonder if he could roll it in, but I don't think he roll it in. I don't know if he can miss the black. If he could put it thick, he might be able to get the top onto the cue ball. Or might come into black. Oh, he just missed it. He's done really well there. It's a good yeah. shot. Played it with loads and loads of side. You can see yeah. the revolutions on the keyboard just to avoid this eight. Putting it thick and, and rolls it in. It's, it's yeah. a lovely finish that from Tom Cousins. A break and run, and he, he just got the sense he, he needed that a little yeah. bit just to, just to get his head on. Well, that yeah. in its own way is an incredible achievement. Yeah, that is because it's tough, you know. Oh, well, Cookie's found his break. Oh yes, that's, that'll do him. That's that's the prime example there of like that. That's like watching three darts. Treble one, treble five. There's the treble twenty. Yeah, that's what he's yeah, trying to hit. Just finding it, yeah. And that's the one he wants, definitely. Yeah, that's a beauty. Look at this, this is how he was breaking in the last series. He's, he was taking a lot of. When I was watching him play Gareth, he, he was getting a lot of breaks like this. Yeah. The ball splitting nice, hitting them well, and taking them out. And when when you're under a lot of pressure, this is ideal for you. you know? Well, that's how Tom Cousins has, has made his living. Is how many times has he come to the table with a split that you think, oh, he, he won't miss these in moments of pressure? When, yeah. when you've got a when you've got a break that's going well for you. It's such yeah. an incredible weapon. Yeah. The, the thing is, I think that sticks out with Tom though. He does get that happen a lot, but when he has that really tough shot, he just still makes it look easy. You know, and that's you know he does that so well. Oh yeah, that wasn't to underplay anything. No, yeah, no hands Tom, there. Yeah. But Tom does afterwards for sure. Yeah, so it's when when you watch him, think, oh, he's got to play a hard shot now, and then he just makes it look easy anyway. So I don't think yeah. there is hard shots when he's. Do you mean? You take that right now. It's yeah, I think you can put this on the thick side of the pocket and yeah. still hold fine. He might. Would he go one in the? Yeah, he's just gonna have the next shot he's gonna have though. I think he might be tempted to take the one in the middle now. So he could take the one in the middle, then come the one in the. He will go past the one in the corner, come back up towards a black spot, then play the one top right, because. So the one close to the left middle pocket. You mean yeah, first. one closest to the left middle pocket, and he will come up inside in between the yellow and red. Well, his original plan was this, yeah. but I think he wanted to be straight I in on it. I just this shot. If he's playing the one bottom left, you can get away from you this shot. The cue ball, you really got to hold, control the cue ball nicely. Unless he can cut this in and miss the red in the mid. Mm. Even if he misses the red, it feels like a gamble, doesn't it? Yeah. Because if you cut this in, and you, even if you miss the red, you, you're sort of dicing I a little bit with the yellow a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you need to. You want to come back up inside the yellow so you don't have to leave too much of a thin cut. Oh, he's loads and loads of right yeah, on that. Yeah, he's right here. You can just hold his cue ball. You need to put that, you needed to put that last red quite thin as well to so the. The side of grip. Yeah, you can see the revolution of the keyboard player with loads and loads yeah. of check just to straighten the angle up. I won't want to do too much with this at all, literally just kill it in. Yeah. Mm. yeah when you play it at that sort of pace, yeah. it's easy. Can't little, miss. little slidey slew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's get your own book of catchphrases. Yeah, soon, mate, well, sure. they're, they're not really genius, are they? <laughs> it's just the next word rhymes with the first one. <laughs> cool, blimey! <laughs> Some cousins about. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a crack in the slate there. Yeah, well that's come down. Possibly. What an absolute boomer this is! See, if you watch, if you can watch the cube, it just gets so much bigger the closer it gets to the camera. Shots from above. If you could just do them in slow mo, you can see how big the cue ball gets. For how it's close like it's to isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Matt Cook's got to go. He's got yeah, four and a half minutes to try and force three frames. I don't think he'll have time for four, but yeah. we'll stop for racking and he, he just needs to get his chances. And he might want to just flick that red on the way through to open the pocket. Um, didn't maybe the plant goes. I'm not sure the plant's nice though. It must go otherwise. I think you might have been a bit more careful with the. Say, be careful. 15 seconds. You can't really be too careful. You just. Well, it went independently. Yeah. Didn't think that was the case. Yeah, I think the trouble was it was just this red that's still there. We had to screw into it. Whereas if you flick that red away through, to moved it out the way for that red. 
maybe he did try that but like I say when you're rushing you can't really take too much care you have to just get on with it it's the only thing I don't I do feel the 15 second really affects the quality of the pool which I know some people like but yeah um, <laughs> don't like it that much <laughs> there's not many sports where the, the quality goes down the more you get towards the end sometimes but. I think it's almost become part of the skill, hasn't it? Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely something. Because you watch the a good example is is Tom Cousins and Stevie Dempsey, just how adept they are in the latter stages of matches. And it all comes down to how quickly and well they see the game. Yeah. That shot from Tom Cousins there, perfect example, really. He, d he doesn't look like he's rushing, does he? And uh, well, he's still never once in his life looked like he's been rushed. You've seen him uh, at the burger van. <laughs> no, he does make it look. Uh, it doesn't make. It doesn't feel like 15 seconds, does it? When he's when you're watching him. Yeah, it almost seems like he's wandering around yeah. in slow motion at times. doesn't look he looks like he still wants to get the finish but just you know he's going to get it at his own pace yeah exactly he's not going to go too slow for the clock he's just gonna yeah I mean it, it makes complete sense for him to use as much of those 15 seconds as possible just yeah. in case of uh, of any tragedies but he's, uh, he's just about there is Tom Cousins Very, very good from Tom Cousins, who completes the job against Matt Cook. He's got his hands full here with Jordan. Jordan's been on fire the last few events. He played well in China um, last week. He was unfortunate to lose in a deciding frame. But, you know, all in all, um, you have to put Jordan favourite. Yeah, that's right. On, pro on recent form, Jordan Shepard, the wizard. I mean, he had... He was incredible at the last event here in Blackpool. You know, he got close to the first event, but the second one, he was just outstanding. And you know, he's, he's one of those players. That if you, if you let him get into the table, it can be over in the blink of an eye. Yeah, Jordan's certainly one of them players that when he goes on, one he can destroy anybody. And he played brilliant the last two events. And uh, to be honest, I was fortunate um, to beat him. He missed a couple of chances, which. He doesn't normally miss, and uh, I took them, and that's what you got to do against these top pros. Got to take your chances when you get them, and here's one here for Luke. Well, the thing, the thing with Luke is he wants to get in very, very early. Needs, needs frames on the board against these type of players, you know. But this is a great opportunity. I mean, it does become psychological and, you know, do you, do you, you go into these games, you know who you're playing in. You can take it two ways, you know, I think, well, this is a big challenge. I want to go out here, I'm, I'm the underdog. Let's see if I can take a big scalp. Or do you sort of fold it in amongst all the atmosphere out on the main table? Well, you, you've just got to play your normal, natural game and don't worry about who you're playing. I mean, if you start worrying about who you're playing, then you've no chance of winning. Just play your own game. Don't let any any outside interference get to you. A little bit surprised he's played that shot there. I think he could have played for the right of the yellows of the two into the bottom left hand corner. I'm not sure if it went, but if it did, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't play for that. He's okay. He can play the yellow in the top right hand corner and screw over for his yellow on the side cushion. And if he gets on that, he'll be in perfect position. Well, an early miss there from Luke Sanchez, and it's Shepard now at the table. We'll have another look at this. Awkward queuing over the black ball for this yellow into the corner. And you see, didn't quite cut it thin enough. And they'll be disappointed. 
because he knows all too well this man when he's on and his confidence in his tails up he's a hard man to tame yeah like I said earlier to he, he played brilliant in the the two previous tour events and he played awesome in China and again he was very unfortunate to lose that match um, he played a great shot under pressure which anybody could have missed and unfortunately clipped off a ball and went off in the corner and if he played that shot a thousand times it probably wouldn't happen but a little bit of a tester it is missable but you wouldn't think he wouldn't miss it well use the yellow had the buffer one thing about Jordan he doesn't hang about either yeah, it's brilliant to watch and you know this is what you want to see when you fast flowing pool and big clearances big breaks yeah he's box office is Jordan no question just steady himself now he knows this ball is basically frame ball in it goes and just the formalities Chris yeah good good pattern play here from Jordan hasn't had to do much with the cue ball and as you can see here with his last red it's a simple stop shot Listen, when you're at the very, very top of the game, everything looks very easy. Yeah, and I think that's the same in any sport, really. If you watch the darts, the snooker, the, all the top players make it look easy. But, you know, I can assure you it isn't as easy as what people think. Well, there's Jordan Shepard. A very quick frame to his side of the board. So how are you playing then, Chris? You've got a big game later tonight and we'll be watching that. Yeah, well, I've been uh, very busy, Tony. Um, literally been home one day in the last two and a half, three months. Ooh. Um, I was in America for a week, flew to Spain for a week for tournaments, flew to Vietnam for a week playing over there in the Asian Open, flew from there to Thailand for two weeks, flew from there to China for two weeks. Well, you got might as well take all of Asia while you're out there. Yeah, and I got home and I was home one day, did an exhibition down in Hastings, stayed over next day I did an exhibition in Birmingham and the day after that I flew to Ireland where I've done three days exhibitions in a row and then flew here I got here about an hour ago so preparation not great but on the other hand I've probably played more pool than anybody on the planet I was going to say if, you've, if it's non-stop playing pool you don't really need to practice do you good break here from Shepard we'll have another look kept the white coming straight up to the middle of that top rail did a game earlier with Phil Parkin and Lee Anderson and I think we had three or four in off the brakes in a row Phil Parkin went in off in the, in the same top left hand corner but like two and two breaks in a row and you, you just can't afford to do that at this level can you no not this level I mean Jordan really here has only one shot to play and if you can pot that yellow in the bottom screw straight back pot the yellow in the middle of the table in the middle pocket and just cannon the red I think this frame's over well I'd have never played that shot but he's played it well Oof. he's played it well he's had a nice little flick he did play to do that I would have been using the yellow over the middle to just nudge that black out and then he was on the other yellow over the co over the opposite middle pocket but he's got a, f a few tricky little shots to play here as Jordan but it's that yellow right at the bottom of the table for me that's obviously stands out as has been the, the major problem yeah and what, Does, what you could go in is would you go in or not well I'd, I'd try and just flick the red I'd actually try and flick the red and flick the other red if that makes sense I do I, I do understand that sure that's a, it's quite a tricky little shot to be playing oh a touch harder and he was plum I think he's still okay it's not the end of the world he has got an angle to go up the table and get on his other yellow but the problem here is that what people don't see at home this table is so responsive that this natural shot here with Jordan playing the yellow in the middle the natural angle will be to cannon the red that's in the middle of the table near the bolt line but on here it throws so wide as you can see it's screwed it's trying to cannon the red what a great shot wow still got a little bit of work to do but that is some positional shot he's going to have to screw two cushions side cushion top cushion in behind the red oh can he roll it in and cannon the red well he's got away with one there that wasn't the shot for no, me it wasn't 
it was very very dangerous he, if he catches that red half ball he snookered if he catches it the other side the cue ball comes across the table he's got no shot he can use the red to kill the cue ball he's gone further Ooh. down the table with the cue ball than he liked well I will sa say this this shot on any normal supreme table is, is a tough shot on here I'd expect Jordan to get it probably 8 out of 10 and that's all because you know the cloth's brand new, the ball's new. If he gets anywhere near this drops. Well, it was a mile away and it still nearly dropped. It did, unbelievable. And all that's come about from that loose positional shot, second to last ball before he got on the eight ball. I mean he's missed this by some way and it's still nearly dropped. Well these are the chances the Luke Sanchez has to take. You don't get very many of them. Sometimes you don't get any. Yeah, I've played, I've played enough tournaments where you don't get many chances. And well, it's you that's normally doing addition, though, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Never mind sometimes. You're always here at the business end, mate. How many world titles? Uh, two. Two, two yeah. I thought, thought you won more than that. No, but I, I didn't play for about nine years in the World Championship, so maybe I would have won a, maybe one or two more. Who knows? I'm sure you would have done. Well, I wouldn't be playing the cannon. I wouldn't be playing this. No, that is never the shot, Luke. That is never the shot. And he's conceded. Conceded the frame. Yep. Slightly distracted. Maybe it was a loudspeaker, I think, in the arena when uh, they're announcing matches on some of the outer tables. Yeah, and he lost the cue ball again there, did Luke. It went towards the side pocket. Well, we'll still be pleased with the result of the break, though. Yeah, and it's just all going against him, really. I mean, these have come out pretty difficult. He's got a couple of awkward reds. But I will tell you something. If he can leave that red over the top corner pocket, it might not be too bad. But what red does he pop before that? Well, he's got a little bit of work to do here as uh, Luke. He has got a good chance, so follow, follow this red in the middle pocket. Leave the red that's on the spot where the eight ball would be racked. Half ball. No, that's not the shot, Luke. That's not the shot. If he leaves it half ball, he can come off the bottom cushion, cannon the yellow, and it opens everything up. For me, I think he's got a pot there. Stop bringing the cue ball back and play red onto yellow and pot on both. I mean, he still might clear up, you know, but... He has to play that right now, red on the yellow over the bag, pot on both, skill shot, play on. But can he pot the red in the centre pocket and just flick the yellow softly? Then play the red mm. in the bottom right-hand corner pocket. I'll stand by my decision. I'd be playing red on the yellow, try and get them both in the same shot. If it stays over the bag, it's loss of term, and it's not an absolute disaster either, is it? Yeah, I think if he doesn't get it, though, he's lost. I mean, he got it. He listened, listened to the basher. Never mind you magicians and all your fancy shots. <laughs> How does he get from the red over the middle? Well, we'll think about that later, the Chris, eh? <laughs> let's, just, let's just enjoy the moment, can we? Yeah, it'd be nice to see Luke <laughs> clear up from here because he's had a few opportunities, but you know this, this wasn't an easy opportunity at all. Well, he's got to play the one in the middle. Absolutely no choice. Oof. No choice whatsoever. Suddenly just become very, very difficult. This I'm not sure. He's, I, I think he's going to try and chip the ball in the corner. You know, try and kick into the other red. He too, is too dangerous. If you land the wrong angle, what shot have you got? He's going to flick the yellow and flick the red and probably have no shot. Yeah, it, it was never the shot. Well, never. he would have had a shot, but he was very quick down in playing that shot. And yeah, he was concentrating that hard on the cannon to get on the red. He's forgot about potting the other red. Yeah. He'll feel a little bit disappointed here with Luke, but he's not played bad and what a flick Jordan's just had there. Yeah, but the, uh, the yellow goes past the black into the centre, doesn't it? Yeah, he's, uh, he's had a couple of nice little flicks in this match as Jordan. Oh, oh. wow. We didn't expect that one. No, we didn't. 
took it for granted? Well, I don't know if he took it for granted, but I mean, that is a poor miss. Maybe try to be too accurate with the cue ball. But Luke has now got a great opportunity. Control that nicely. Is, is he too straight? If he's straight, it's a stun shot and play the double. Yep, all day long. Get in the right position. The double's fairly straightforward, though. Yeah, you take that. This is missable though, on these tables. Oh, great shot there. <laughs> well, that's a fair break there from Luke Sanchez. Wow. Look at the yellows. Well, look at the reds. What do you take? I think you take the yellows, but... Well, I remember a quote you once said when you were commentating on one of my games, Tony, back at the World Championships. You said he's brought them that good, he could turn around to his opponent and say, which ones do you want me to go for? Yeah. <laughs> wow, they are unbelievable. You could do that now, couldn't you? Definitely. I you mean, choose my colour for me, go on, I dare you. Yeah, and he'd love to be able to get rid of that red does the, the top I was going to say, does the black go past that red in the middle? I think it does, doesn't it? So, so that would have been the only way that you wouldn't choose yellows, I think. He's calling his extension. I think he's going to go for the reds. Yeah, yeah. Can, can he spin it? Ooh, not sure, Tony, not sure. If the mm. red goes past the yellow in the top right hand corner, then he'll probably leave the one over the middle to go up, to up table for that ball. But I don't think it does. That's a nice shot there. He'd love now to be able to get up for that ball. And the, the key with this shot for people watching at home, don't underhit this shot. If you overhit the shot, it's going to be okay. You're going to have a nice angle. Yeah. Just don't underhit the shot because then you're in trouble. He's in trouble. Ooh. Had to get past the bolt line there, didn't you? Yeah, the, he, he had a good six inch to eight inch to land in. Past yeah. the bolt line, you've got your angle. You can get down the table. Jordan looking intently on now. He might be thinking he's going to get a little sniff at these yellows. Yeah, and again, this has come from his first shot. If he lands on the ball up the cushion, this is easier. Oh, what a shot he's played there. Has he got the gap? He's come too far, hasn't he? He's gone too far. He's got a shot, though. He's got a shot. Not an easy one at that, but it's a shot. It's been some round the house of stuff in the last few frames, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, do you know the shot here, Tony? Pot the red? Yep, loads <laughs> of left-hand spin, four cushions, and back in between the red and the yellow near the eight ball. Yeah. He's not hit it. He's not hit it. He's in trouble now. Red off the eight ball in the middle. No, it's only shot. The eight ball's going all over the gaff here. <laughs> <laughs> and probably the eight ball's going to can in the red. Off the bottom cushion. What about don't the red ball into the black? In, scrapes off the yellow into the middle. I tell you what, don't be surprised. Oh, he's plainly cut. This is dangerous. Oh, what oh, a it's shot. Got off the yellow. What a shot. Oh, oh my word. Box office. Oh. What a shot. That is oh. a shot of the tournament so far. Unbelievable. Brilliant, what a shot. brilliant shot. Wow. Take a bow, Luke Sanchez. What a shot that was. Unreal. And if that doesn't pick him up, nothing will. No, and that's that an unbelievable shot. Yeah, and that's really going to hurt Jordan. What a shot he's played here. That is so difficult to play at that pace and get the cue ball back down for position. He's playing well again. Cue ball. Oh, same pocket three times Unbelievable. Now. And that could be the end of Luke Sanchez. Yeah, and it's a little bit unlucky. I mean, the cue ball is going towards the pocket, so you can say that it's a, a bad break. But the balls are always going to help it in, aren't they, as they go up with it? They are, and wow. Look at them yellows. Look at the reds. Yeah, well, there's his ticket to the next round for Jordan Shepard. Yeah, he doesn't have much to do here, doesn't Jordan? Again, it's spoke for choice. 
but he has made a couple of little errors in here when they've been quite what you'd say formality finishes for a play of Jeopards Jeopards Jordan Shepherd's quality so we've got a new we've got a new senior player in the tournament Johnny Jeopard <laughs> then we'll pick Chris up off the floor from laughing yeah that's tickling me that one you want tickling well, how, how do you fancy that, Chris? You fancy him now? Well, if he doesn't clear up from here, then he doesn't really deserve to win. Well, you kind of feel that it's, he's been good, he's had some funny moments, and Luke Sanchez has been, you know, he, he could have been level with him, but, you know, with a couple of chances early doors. Yeah, it's just he's just gone in off three times in the top right corner yeah. pocket. But this is uh, what champions are all about. Yeah, and he's missed a couple of good opportunities, really. This red and one decent positional shot. Oh, he's played it perfectly. This eight ball. For the match for Jordan Shepherd. In it goes, and it's Shepherd that advances. Unlucky Luke Sanchez. Stevie's just been an animal. Well, he's going to have to wait for his first opportunity because it's a dry break, which is rare for Stevie. He quietly has a, a hammer of a break. Very rarely has any sort of sequences of dries. He's normally very, very relentless with his break. But of course. There's a, probably about as tough a first round draw as he possibly could have got really. Josh Kane, it was the world semi-final, Josh beat him in that event. He is probably, you know, right up there, you know, it's amazing actually, he's outside the top 32 in the rankings, you know, such a talented player. I didn't actually know that, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, bit of, I'm a bit of shock when it comes to, you know, thinking that, because Josh is so good. World finalist this year, former World Masters champion, such a good player. You can actually feel the buzz. It feels a bit different now. Simon, as kind of Thursday progresses into Thursday night, you see all the players buzzer with a good win earlier, and it feels like the event starts to come alive on a Thursday night. Yeah, a few more players come into the arena. A lot of challengers arriving for their tournament starting tomorrow, and the women's series starting tomorrow as well. I think the one thing with Josh is obviously we do know at his absolute best he's a world beater you know he won the WPF World Masters he's been in the world final this year you know we've seen some brilliant stuff from him from Altman Paul but yet to see him go deep enough and, and win a title but it feels like every time he's playing a really big draw when he's in the big matches he really turns up and delivers he maybe you know he just struggles in some of the earlier rounds and he's missed a couple of events as well which has not helped his ranking but when he's really elevated on the higher stage he seems to really perform yeah he definitely does he's a big time player very exciting prospect to watch really not who Stevie would have wanted to see in the context of the race for the number one spot also doesn't help that Tom Cousins has already won his first round match so he's and he's already starting with a, a 1000 point advantage which is essentially like the last 16 run We've seen anything from Stevie Dempsey this year. We've seen that winning mentality. Just the two of them, I think, have just been phenomenal. I, I don't think we'll see anything like that again. You know, I never say never. I know we've seen the run of Shane and um, you know, others that have done so well with Ultimate Pool, but a bit of a careless one from from Josh. Disappointment. Yeah, and equally, it could have been a lot better for <laughs> Josh Kane. Well, obviously, we're seeing it from Stevie Dempsey's side of the table, saying Josh Kane is, you know, is, is as bad, tough a first round as match as he could have got. But actually, it, it's probably a very similar story, you know, of, for Josh. You know, but part of that is his own doing because he knows he should be inside the top 32. And actually, he's right on the fringes as well. He's currently ranked 32 for the year, so he needs a big weekend hit to get himself in there, so he's not fighting that same battle next year. First look here at Stevie. I think Gladiator Paul passes the red to the bottom left corner, so everything has a pocket. This is where we see the pattern play from the hammer. Yeah, and this is one that isn't too difficult for him to, to work out. The red's being out of the way, make it nice and comfy for him, but 
nice opportunity to get the QM going and flow through a few. I mean, if you can convert this chance, you kind of feel like it's a, a second chance saloon going dry on the break. Spent some time, we mentioned this obviously, we were commentating together on a, a previous match earlier on this afternoon on the stream table two. And the, you know, I did some filming with Stevie, talking to him about his patterns, the way he sees the game and stuff. And there's some players out there that play a game that I can't relate to, and you couldn't teach other players to play that way because they play a lot of execution type pool. The way Stevie goes about his clearances, if you work hard enough and you study what he's doing and you want to try and emulate what he's doing, you can do that because he keeps the game incredibly simple. The genius and the skill level in what he does in his patterns is amazing. Yeah, I think that leads into the underdog mentality that I mean, he's won so much and we yeah. people still refer to him as an underdog. You know, he still seems to have that kind of you know come from behind mentality, not yeah. one of the apparent sort of favourites and. I, it baffles me because of how good he has been, how good he is. But it is one of those things, like we spoke about earlier. If you were a lay person, you didn't know anything about pool, you would probably walk into the pub, and if you saw Stevie playing, you would say, "Hmm, you know, not what I would expect from a professional." But when you're in the the realms of a of a professional pool player, I mean, really, at the minute, there's no one better. No. There are some players out there that I've filmed with, and you know, someone like a Mick Hill, they see a shot and then they're like if I do that I'm going to win the frame because it's everything is easy whereas Stevie's is much more of an evolving kind of there's my problem I'm going to solve it this way I've got this option if it doesn't I've got that option so it's almost like but it, but it's everything is just simplified and it's so amazing to watch and actually hear those insights yeah it's funny Stevie's been a very good player for a very long time I mean we have to go all the way back to 2007 we saw him lift the European title he was only about 18 you know and it's it's just been the evolution through Ultimate Pool. I think he's embraced the match clock. I think he's embraced the format. He's worked on it, worked it into his game, and he's actually turned it into a weapon. And I think that has been a massive... He's such a good player. But that kind of focused sort of way of, of using everything as a weapon to, to be able to kind of outsmart your opponent, outwork your opponent, get by your opponent, that race to the challenger, number one, so exciting too. It's I think it's amazing. It's like, like either one of David Hogan or, or Connor Tracy is, is going to finish or probably number two and haven't won two challenger titles in a season. It, yeah, it's quite amazing. But they, they both could get pipped as well. That's the amazing thing. But it would take something very, very special to pip them both. But they are the two standout players, no doubt. Yeah, Kyle Cope very much in the mix there for that number one. And then I suppose with the way the challenger is, I mean... Theoret we've seen it already. I, I say theoretically, but it's happened this season. Somebody could come and win both these events this weekend and come from nowhere and, and finish number one. Yeah, you get 5,000 ranking points for, for winning a title, and Connor's on 14, uh, David Hogan's on 11 and a half, and Kyle's on 10. So it is sort of between, you know, it's in Connor's hands, no doubt about it, but David Hogan and Kyle Cope are right there, and then it's a big drop off. It's another 2,500 points back to Josh Juaz on, on 2,600. So it, it would take something very, very special for anybody outside of the, the top three, but it is mathematically possible. So you have to keep reminding <laughs> ourselves that, but you feel like it's going to come from the, the top three and, and probably more than likely the top two. I think if Connor Tracy hadn't have won both events, you know, three and four of the Challenger Series in the same weekend, we'd probably be sitting here saying, oh, it's impossible for anybody to get there, but yeah. given that it's already happened already this happened, year. Yeah. And then obviously David Hogan, you know, putting in two events himself, two wins, you know, insane. Yeah, very, very impressive years from, from so many, and exciting to see how they'll go, because they're just going to add to the strength of what's already a very strong field here with the professionals. Well, with this match though, this is this is key. Three one four nil right here and now for for Josh Kane. Yeah, I just want to give a little shout to all the Irish players that, that do travel across the Ultima Pool collectively as a as an island. We've had an inc incredible run. I don't know if you know the stats, but it, yeah, I you ran told them. Me it's big, isn't it? You know, we've had eight up to this is the ninth, but we've had eight pro series events, eight challenger events and four women's series events, twenty events, eleven finalists and six <laughs> titles come up. You know, that it's that's crazy. Incredible. It really, it's it's amazing statistic. I don't see it slowing down for a while either as well. I think there's more, plenty more to come. Yeah. Obviously with a big announcement yesterday. 
with the launch of the Province Series. We will see an Ultimate Pool Island Series kicking off in the new year. Yeah, really exciting. Looking forward to that. Oh, Josh, I, he didn't want to do get too close to this one. He didn't want to risk going behind the yellow. But this is a very challenging eight ball at 3-0 down. That's a fantastic shot. Right in the heart, wasn't it? That was brilliant. Absolutely. That looked a lot easier than what it was, but to be able to play it at that pace... Yeah, I'm, I've, I've got a sneaking suspicion this weekend we're going to see... Uh, hey. Ooh. Of course, there's no golden breaks in play. I'm getting <laughs> overexcited. <laughs> So much work on a Monday for yeah, you. Yeah, so used to the Mondays. Of course, no golden breaks or golden ducks in play. Are they in play in the amateur championship? They are, they yeah. Are, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've seen a we've seen a few as well. A little bit fiddly this one for Josh, but not too bad here on the reds. I'm assuming the red passes the yellow left centre. If even if not though, he's like assuming he can get to the one bottom right. Yeah, I think it's all fine. I think with thin clip on the one bottom right. Might offer him better position and might open things up a little bit more, but looks like he sees it differently. He might play a bump into the eight ball if he doesn't feel it, it really goes comfy. But it does look like it goes left centre fine, so he probably won't need to. First thing you look at really when you've got great players out there is what problems do they have and how are they going to solve it? When, e when you work out that actually everything's got a pocket and then it's just about the connections, that's when you think you fully expect him to get it and that's where we're at once again with Josh Kane here. Yeah. You just get a sense with how these guys are kind of flowing and you can tell from their everything, you know, that when they, they look at the table, I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, this frame's over. I know it's never set, but I don't know, it's just the way the kind of you just get that vibe and that feeling from them. You'd be more surprised if they didn't get the finish than if they did. And Josh Kane's really frozen Stevie Dempsey out of this middle part of this match. Yeah, there was a frame or two that something Stevie would like to have again, but since then it's just been all Josh. I was just saying, I have a sneaking suspicion that we might see a new name on a trophy this weekend. I, I just have a vibe. There's plenty to choose from. Yeah, There's plenty is. of players. I mean, the number of times I've said on commentary that you know, they're going to win at some point, they'll win at some point. There's a lot of players that certainly you believe are capable. John McAllister's one who yeah. intrigues me. I think coming close, obviously, a new pro for this year. Highest ranked new pro this year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, of course, I mean, I know the World Championships, the various World Championships aren't maybe as much as they used to be, but he's been in two finals and he's won one of them. You know, he's won many, many pro titles in his career. You know, he, his CV is phenomenal. And he may be a little bit like Stevie Dempsey at the moment, under the radar, or Stevie Dempsey was, I mean. Yeah. I, do you know, I remember uh, being at tournaments and John was about 12 and winning under 18 titles and he was one of these well Stevie all of a sudden is a couple behind from nowhere here this is where he really needs to find something otherwise this match could be done the rhythm that Josh is on and he needs a ball and he's, he's going to get one that would have been criminal if oh, he didn't get a ball been, yeah. <laughs> that is how you break folks absolutely timed to perfection What's his layout like? It's not bad. Everything has a pocket, nothing really to do. Can we see Stevie throw a punch? He's been taking them. This is what I like to see, Sai. Blow for blow. Yeah. He 
comes down to can you take your chance, otherwise you're going to lose the frame and then your opponent gets their chance. And that's not ideal. He's got that one wrong. And he's, uh, he's nowhere here. I don't even know if this red goes past the yellow to left centre. I think he's got the red to the top right. But it's, it's not nice. A little bit of shock for Stevie Dempsey here. Was cruising and Josh Cairns really put him to the sword in this in these middle frames. Take this long, this will reopen the frame for him, but it's tough. And it's there. That's brilliant. That was do or die, wasn't it? That doesn't go in, he'll probably feel that's match over. Brilliant. But he's got to convert this chance. It's imperative that he doesn't let Josh get any further ahead. He just needs to connect these. It's going to be a little bit more difficult just because he's kind of going to have to go up the table to come back down again. But if there's anybody that can work it out, it's the hammer. That little flick is so clever, just to bump the eight ball to a place where he can access it from a wide variety of places rather than having to get all the way down the table. It's things like that that make Stevie Dempsey Stevie Dempsey. Yeah. The easy thing to do there would have been to just play it safe, come off the cushion, get yourself the perfect angle on the red. But the eight ball was not inaccessible, but much more difficult to land on. And as you say... He's opened it up to be able to, I mean, really, he leaves himself anywhere in an open part of the table. He can pot the eight ball. That wasn't the case up until that really clever and delicate shot. I think he's slightly irritated with the angle he's left himself because he, he may have to pick a gap here, but it should just about be okay. Slightly hampered queuing. But he's not. Is he? Well, actually, he is. Just body language. Immediately thought he's in trouble, but... The step around the table, you knew he was fine. Yeah, these cameras play tricks on us. Sometimes we have to rely on what the players tell us. Well, now he's swerving, so he isn't oh. on it. I was right. Stevie fooling us. Oh, very, very good. good. That's such a clever finish from Stevie Dempsey. He looked down and out, and a big, big moment in it. Oh, it's... Oh, it's crunching. Uh, it's, it is crunching. And there's work, though. There's more work than the last frame. Stevie getting ready. You see, oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just making sure he is ready to go. To be fair, it's not really gamesmanship, although you could see it like that. He has to be ready. It's 15 seconds a shot. But he knows there is work here for Josh Kane. But it is an opportunity. Assuming the fact he's gone reds, that the eight ball must pass the yellow to bottom right, because if not, reds would be a nightmare. Now, it's all about the red on the left-hand side. That eight ball looks tight, though. Yeah, it does look tight. Can he go in now? He's trying it. That's oh. not worked. And in trying it, he's actually developed both of Stevie's difficult yellows. Yeah, that's why the shake of the head. Tried it again, and he's missed it. Stevie Dempsey. And that yellow passes, the reds, to top right. So these yellows are on. Not easy, but they're on. It's interesting, actually, to me how... how oh, he's just got there. Yeah, I was going to say, it's interesting to me how Stevie will go about this. I mean, what 
if you're a player, what, what are you doing? Are you going through it quickly to give yourself enough time to win the match? Or are you trying to just make sure of it so as you get to six each and, you know, maybe manage the clock a bit? You know what? To be honest with you, I, I, it, the match is going along at such a lick. I hadn't. I knew we were in the 15 seconds, but I, I just felt we're going to get a winner. I hadn't even entered my head that we could end up at six for a shootout here, but you're absolutely right. But I don't think he needs to worry. He knows a counter clearance here leaves more than enough time for the... The, the deciding frame and he'll back himself to make a break clearance that's what you know the top players do they believe that every time they have the break that's a frame on the board so he'll just be going through this at a steady pace you know, he is oh, he's not happy he's come a little bit short here he wanted to be straight in on this yellow top left this is difficult because given the angle of this that, that red's going to be more I know it's not in the path of the, of the yellow but it, it just plays bigger <laughs> he'll take this it's not how he played it but he'll absolutely take it it's not going to leave a very easy last yellow he may have to accept a, a very tricky ball from possibly even as high as the break line here no, he's trying to get a little bit closer to it but is he going to go too far he yes. is <coughs> and all of a sudden Josh can't you can see he's just sat up in his own chair Stevie's going to need a, a massive fluke here, and he hasn't got it. We see the handshake already. Oh, that's incredible. Jimmy Carney. Jimmy Carney's won the lag, and he is going to get things going. Gives me great pleasure to welcome Tom Cousins on commentary with me. Good evening, Tom. How are you, Nick? All right? I'm very well, thanks. I'm really looking forward to this game. It's, uh, it's. I mean, there's a, there's an obvious favourite in this in terms of in terms of Chris. Everyone sort of looks at this game and thinks that Chris is a big favourite, but Jimmy's a dangerous player as well, isn't he? Yeah, Jim, Jimmy had a, uh, a couple of good results, I think, on the last event as well. So um, yeah, must be playing well, and this should be a cracking game. Yeah, it should be it should be fireworks. A little a little bit of a contrast in styles. Jimmy's probably just slightly more of a, a measured player. Chris is. Um, He's been all over the world recently. <laughs> I saw his itinerary. And yeah. he's been he's been in America, he's been over in China. Yeah, he was just telling me out there before I come in, he's doing exhibitions all this week I think and been in Ireland for exhibitions and yeah, the Philippines, so what a life, Tom, what a life. Yeah. The life of a pool player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, you, so do, do you get all of that? <laughs> uh so right if you ain't got kids, but uh, yeah, exactly. I've got two kids so I try and stay in England. So Jimmy Carney with the first option is taking reds, and that was a good tester. Got a few problems here, though. though Tommy's got that, that red just above the yellow, uh, the two yellows on the left-hand side, which he's, he's looking now. There's no way to move that, so he's going to have to land on the double. Well, I mean, I, th I think if he wants to, he might be straight enough to screw into it now, but, yeah, as you say, he's looking at the double. Um, I'd probably leave that till last if he can, but um, just because you're not guaranteed to be on the red... Yeah he's, yeah, he's gone a bit far. So many players have been caught out with the pace on this table. You were saying just before we came on comms that the table takes some getting used to. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think it's uh, a new cloth. Um, and obviously these cloths anyway are a lot faster than what you play on in the club. I've been putting the hours in recently and coming to this table, it's, again, completely different. So That was a lightning fast. He's, uh, he's picked out a double. I think he might be a treble here, Nick. Oh. He's just missed, just misjudged that one. And uh, Chris is in with a chance. He's similarly got a problem with those two, the two yellows on the left-hand cushion. Um, he's obviously, he's going to have to try and develop those, Tom, but they're not the easiest balls to try and get open, are they? No, well, I, f I think if he rolls this, this yellow in the middle, he, he might be able to leave himself a perfect angle, but I may be tempted just to just to lay up, put him in a nice snooker here. Yeah. yeah. But Chris probably won't be playing that. He'll probably go for it. I think that was his first instinct. He was looking to see whether there was a safety there, and I think he's going to play it now. Yeah. Just going to pull stumps and... Yeah, that's definitely the right shot for me. Yeah, nice. Good containing shot. And now the great thing is those yellows go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, 
of what you're doing here, Nick. You're just giving it a slap. I think I, I don't think there's any option but to. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have to try and going to have to try and double this. That's what he, that's what he's looking at. But yeah, look at that straighten up. That, that's the other thing out there. Didn't it ever? And now Chris, with a ball in hand, he can just place it anywhere on the table, and this really should be a fairly straightforward clearance. Yeah, not ideal for Jimmy. Playing somebody like Chris, you need to get off to a good start. And I don't see any problems here. This should be 1-0. Just got such a lovely fluid action around the table. Quick and great control of the cue ball. It's, it's unbelievable, Nick, as well, the way Chris can play Chinese eight ball and then come and play this game because I went to China once and I came back and I couldn't put a ball for three days or <laughs> couldn't play position or shot just because, you know, uh, the cues are so much bigger that you need to use and fair play to him. I, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know how he does it. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stevie just no lost. One, no so one knows more than you do. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> just a thousand points between between Tom and uh, and Stevie, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think it probably be a little bit more than that. No, I haven't a, looked. A but little bit more now, uh, into, yeah, because he's just lost to Josh Kane. Yeah. So you're obviously happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, it, you know, it's, um, if you're number one, it, it's, it's good to say you're number one, I guess. Yeah, but um, yeah. the way the draws work, it doesn't really matter if you're number one or two. But, um, yeah, it just depends how much you want to be classed as the number one. So. Yeah. I think it comes with. I think you're underselling it there, Tommy. You're <laughs> underselling your season. You've had a, an amazing season, and, and to finish number one in this field, I think is uh, is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I think Chris would have to win both events to to finish number one. But yes, yeah, yeah if me or Stevie uh, are number one and number two, then you know it's fair play to Stevie for the year he's had as well. So you, you can't moan. Just ran out of position there. He was looking to play. He was having to reroute under the top of the table. Yeah, if that yellow sneaks past the red on the black spot, it's a great chance. I think it might. But I think it does too, yeah. Just have to screw this back a couple of inches. Christoph Lambert is uh, watching on. His uh, earphones in, listening to. Maybe a bit of uh, French music in the <laughs> in the background there and enjoying the game. So Philly one, he's just got. Oh, he's played that nice. To be fair. Yeah. That, that yellow didn't look like it goes, though, Nick. But it did look tight, but the way he's going about the finish, I'm I think it pretty must. sure it must. Yeah. I, I don't think he'd be leaving it to the last ball to knock out. So just screw on off the side rail here. Again, come up a, a little bit short. Probably wanted to come out another three or four inches. Just a, a bit, a bit of trepidation in his, yeah. in his back arm there at the moment. It looks just a bit sticky, doesn't it? Yeah. Not quite getting through the ball yet. I think he's. He might have to swing it around two rails here if the middle bag's in the way. Oh, he's playing this it's one now. Go long. Nice. It flies by. Okay, he's gonna. He's, he's got. He's got space to play into. Shouldn't be a problem. There's a fair bit of traffic in the way, and he just needs to get the pace just right. It's an easy one to overhit. Yeah. He should be. He should be fine here. You can either swing it off two or just screw straight back past the black. But he's swinging it off two. Coming around two, and it looks okay. Yeah, it's good. He'll take that, Nick. Absolutely. Screw on off the side rail. His hand on the table as well. He's not hampered. Flow on this one. A little bit stabby. Yeah, that was a bit stabby there, Nick. Wasn't yeah, it ever. Q, Q comes straight, and, and he's. Uh, I mean, I fully expect him to get it, but he's slightly awkward by the red. But Jimmy's a great potter. I don't think he'd be worried about this. Nice, very nice. So Chris Manning breaks in frame number four. That one is going to be dry. It seemed that the, the, 
the cue ball jumped up in the air and it just it, you didn't get that explosion through the pack did you yeah I, I had that earlier as well Nick my, my white kept jumping I don't know if it was that if there's I always break from well I try and break from the same spot and then uh, on my table at the club I have to keep moving the white because I create a divot so that's why the white ball jumps I don't know if there's any divots out there or but I think that's why it, it pops up yeah, as you say, it takes takes some of the pace out of the the cue ball. Yeah, yeah. He actually has that in his arsenal that he he, he plays that as a break sometimes, yeah. and you just see the the cue ball jump four foot in the yeah. air when he puts some real power in it. But uh, he definitely wouldn't have been in, intending to do it there. Looking at a time foul, yeah. I'm just going to check that. I think we'll probably. See the referee pop in and uh, take a look at that one. Yeah, indeed he has. Looked all right to me. He got out of it quickly. He did, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, big moment. You can't see it on our screens, can we? No, it's a big moment for Jimmy Carney. Context in the game. Two one behind. He dearly wants this one. Looking over at that camera, Nick, it looks very close. I think yeah, the referee's already made the call. And uh, he's gone back in to an ounce. It's not a foul. All good. So Jimmy will continue. And as I say, that was a big moment. I know it's early doors, but you know, if um, he doesn't get the time, time file there, he's a, he's a huge favourite to lose this frame. Ooh. And you just wonder if that just took his concentration slightly. Yeah, he's not happy there no. about something. But you can, you can kind of understand why, because it's just taken his momentum away and just taken yeah. his focus away slightly. Yeah, but I mean, w w what do you do? You, yeah. you, you've got to do that, haven't you, I guess? It's not ideal, but... I guess the only saving grace is that he's got a ball over the pocket. Normally, not much of a um, not much of a friend having a ball over the pocket in these rules, but there's not that many reds around to to, to play some kind of um, loss of turn shot. So Chris may have to think about what he's going to do with that. I mean, he can land on it for short position, but the trouble is all the reds at the top of the table. There's no natural balls to be able to get back down. Yeah, there's not and. That yellow on the bolt, uh, that yellow next to the red by the centre of the table. If that wasn't there, you could have used that to uh, as a second last ball. But obviously, gone and off, and that's the end of it. Well, you can only put that one down to a uh, to an error, Tom. That's uh, just a, that little flick on the on the yellow has cost him. I don't know if he was trying to get a full ball contact on that to play the ever red on the bulk line or not, but. I don't think he was. I think he was trying to go past it. And, oh, what, uh, to the top rail? I think so. Yeah. Because then he needs to kind of transition back down the table. So I think he needed to, to leave the one on the bulk line. But ultimately... I was only saying that because the, the, the ball that's closest to the, the on the top rail, he could have used that maybe as a, a natural angle to come yeah. down. Yeah. Jimmy will have been very happy to see that ball. Cube will go into the pocket. I'm not going to jinx Jimmy again. Again, it's um. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't need to do anything clever here. He can um, the yellow passes to. He's going to play it as a plant. I was going to say the yellow does pass to left centre, so he yeah. could have he could have dropped this one in. Yeah, and then left that to to left middle. I think that was probably the right way in it because. I prefer it personally. He'd want to roll this, but if he rolls it, the red could come into play. So he's over. You know, he's, I mean, he's played a good shot there, but it was one of them awkward D cell moments that could have happened. But yeah. he's played it well. Yeah, I'm surprised he went across for the plant, but uh, everyone sees it differently, and ultimately. There are no pictures on the scorecard. It's a 
frame to Jimmy Carney and it's on as even four frames played. Because otherwise everyone will be checking the rack every every frame, is it? Exactly, yeah. 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 Because some, some players do that, don't they? I mean, mm. there's some players who yeah. will go down and look at the rack. More, more of the same from, from his perspective. Oh, he just squirted off the front. It just... Oh, last ball. Well, he put his hand up to apologise there because that, there was, that was dry. That was for the world, it was dry. And look at this last little cannon. Yeah, I'm surprised to see him apologise there. Look at this... Yeah. This yellow just little cannon into the middle. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be apologising yeah. if I got a last ball rolling. Oh. He's going yellows. Wow. Some work to be done. Yeah, just going to pop, pop this yellow in the middle and try and leave an angle uh, on the other yellow into the same middle and just, just play a gentle cannon on the yellow and red. He looks pretty good. Just play this a bit of left hand spin so the the white comes away from the rail. Just oh, to just oh. doesn't want it to sit behind the rail, that's it. Yeah. Just caught it a little bit thick. Just pushing that red over towards the yellow. He's fine for time. But, uh, I mean, it's amazing that these guys have played 11 frames and uh, we're not even in the 15 second shot yeah. block yet. <laughs> That's what usually happens when Melon plays, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. It is an incredible pace. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think, Jimmy, just, just leave the white there. I, I, you know, in, in maybe some of the older rules, Chris would just roll the yellow over the pocket, but there's no value in that here whatsoever. Can you just brush off the, the yellow and leave? Extension mm. I just wondered if he could just... Did he just say foul? Was that a time foul? No, I'm guessing not touch the rail, Nick. Oh. That looked no. like it hit, didn't that it? surely hit the yeah. rail. That surely hit the rail. I mean, you saw it bounce off. Well, there's been a, a couple of... Um, a couple of close calls in this one. I think he's fine. look checking us all right Nick it's hard to tell because of the shadow. It, it, it feels like it rocks back, but does it rock back because it hits the cushion or does it... I don't know. What has the ref said there? I'm not sure. Foul. It's wow. called a foul. Goodness me. I mean, in the context, does that make a massive difference? Well, I guess it does. Wow. It's ball in hand and he can go and attack that. Yeah, yeah. Of course it does. Um, I mean, if I was Jimmy, I might, I might be playing that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he's playing the right show actually. Yeah, it's just I wouldn't like to leave that red near the um, middle bag. But yeah, he's played a great shot there. So he's still, I mean, Chris's saving grace at the moment is that red on the left side cushion. But, um, mentioned earlier how good these players are at putting those balls he just needs to hold it together here oh he's actually he's got a huge pocket at the bottom hasn't he yeah yeah he can yeah just 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 sort of roll this in he he's got the red over the middle bag yeah. the red near the middle pocket he can just he can take it long is one of those I mean if you if you get it close you can't you can't miss it yeah I, I actually think this is unmissable Nick to be honest 
I'd miss it, Tom. <laughs> yeah. I probably would have known. I'm just, I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> I mean, the referees made the call there for sure. I mean, it, my first instinct was that it had hit the cushion and rocked back. Yeah. But then when you look at it in slow motion, it almost felt like it it didn't quite get there and it was just the natural sort of yeah, that's right. movement of the ball. Just leave an angle on this, natural angle for the red in the middle, and that, that's perfect. That's, that's pretty much game over. Wow, that was a, that was a huge moment. Absolutely huge moment. got to say what a standard match this has been Chris has been a bit unfortunate with his breaks absolutely yeah if you take those breaks out of it Tom then uh, you know if he's potting off those breaks then it could be a, a different complexion on the game and hats off to him for uh, for staying in it fair play to Jimmy though he's played put he's played brilliant he really has fantastic match yeah, what a great game of pool Jimmy Carney beats Chris Melling seven frames to find 